This episode of Live WP TV is sponsored by the Microsoft Nerd Center in Cambridge and HostGator.com. I'm going to keep this really casual. Um, I'm going to talk about kind of higher level ideas and things you should be thinking about when you're releasing your first plugin on WordPress.org. I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty details of things. Um, when I was you know, first talking to Tom about this topic, um, I actually thought it would be better suited to be a workshop. So it might be something that um, I expand and maybe do a workshop for in a coming uh, either a meetup or at a WordCamp. So a little bit about me. Um, I'm Aaron. Uh, I own a little company called Lynchpin down in Rhode Island. Um, I've been doing web development for almost 20 years, which you, you wouldn't think that I would be being this young and handsome, <laughs> but uh, I've been doing WordPress for about eight years now, um, and we have a few plugins on WordPress.org. We've just released one recently, and we kind of went through some, uh, you know, not challenges per se, just we had to think about a few things when we were releasing um, uh, our latest plugin. Uh, you can find me actually on uh, the, the WordPress.org Slack, you can just at aware. That's that's me um, or Aaron Ware on Twitter. Um, holler at me. I'm, I'm pretty casual. Uh, so we're we're hiring. Uh, we're we're always looking for uh, talented project managers, designers. Uh, we're in serious need of some senior level uh, PHP engineers that are into WordPress. That's really what we do. Uh, so come hit me up here, or if you want to be more casual, hit me up over Twitter or Slack or whatever. Um, as uh, Tom mentioned, uh, you know, I'm part of WordPress Rhode Island. We used to be WordPress uh, Providence. Uh, we have changed. We now encapsulate the whole state, you know, the smallest state. I figured we could cover the whole thing. Uh, you know, we meet up uh, monthly as well. It's the second Tuesday of every month, and we've been pretty good about that schedule. Um, if you uh, have any ideas for presenting, um, I find that our group is... Great to try out maybe a new topic or a new session, and you want a, maybe a little bit more of an intimate uh, you know, group of like 15 to 20 people on average. It's good to kind of test out an, a new topic, especially if it's maybe your first time public speaking. Um, you know, I, I find it's always a great avenue to test things out. Uh, oh, yeah, come see me at WordCamp Boston. I'm going to be there. I'm going to be uh, speaking maybe a little bit more business-oriented items, uh, but come find me. Uh, I'll be either at there or at the bar, one of the two. Uh, and then it's a great primer. If you go to uh, WordCamp Boston, that means you've totally had a bunch of practice, and then you can go to our WordCamp in Rhode Island. Um, it's a, uh, you know, fall in Rhode Island is beautiful, and, uh, you know, we're looking for uh, speakers and sponsors still, um, and you can get tickets now. So I'm going to make a few assumptions here. Uh, how many of you have written a plugin before? Cool, a few. How many of you that have written plugins have released them on WordPress.org before? The plugin repo. Cool, all right. Not too many, I love it. I'm going to still make some assumptions because I'm not going to walk you through, you know, the, the, the first thing you do to make a plugin. I'm not going to really delve into the coding standards. I'm not going to jump into security best practices. I'm just going to make a bunch of assumptions, and let's just say we have a plugin, and you know, I maybe I've thought about making sure my 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 code is secure, and I've maybe looked at the WordPress coding standards, which I think everybody should. Um, there's a lot of tools that are out there now uh, that you can make it into, uh, you can implement it into your workflow, um, and it honestly does help you. Um, become a better developer in the WordPress community. It's helped me out immensely really getting into it over this last year. Um, so at the end, uh, I'll share a bunch of links. Um, I try and put links in throughout this. And then this isn't on SlideShare because I have it in Keynote and they wouldn't let me upload a Keynote, so i got to convert it. But you'll have it probably before the night's out. So my first question is, why? What, why, why do we really want to release a plugin on .org? Um, you know, it, it's, it's quite the undertaking, you know, so, uh, I was going to start with mesh, but I figured I'd just like cut down the time here. So 
Mesh is a plugin uh, my company released just recently. It's yet another page builder. There's a million of them. If you look for page builders on the .org repo, you're going to see a ton of them. And in a convoluted space, sometimes you have to think about, well, is it just an experiment? Am I just going to kind of release my, my new plugin? Uh, or is my plugin going to actually do something different? Uh, and sometimes, you know, with, with the, the repo, there's a ton of stuff out there. So if you were trying to build the next great, uh, like, form plugin, like a Gravity Forms or Formidable or Ninja Forms or whatever, it's a really tough space. Like, SEO is a tough space. Page builders are a really tough space. But for us, it's not so much we wanted to, uh, you know, compete, like, with, you know, like a you know, visual composer or something like that. We don't sell it. It's just a plugin. We wanted something that was simple. That was the only thing that separated our plugin from others was we just wanted it to work like WordPress. So that's why we released it. Uh, but there's some other things you really have to think about. You know, like, if it's convoluted, who, who really cares? Kanye kind of don't care. You know? But you have to have a willingness to participate. That's the one thing you do actually have to care about. You know, are you willing to answer questions about your plugin? You know, there is a support forum, it's on the web, and people are going to have questions. Immediately, the first, you know, moment you uh, upload your plugin and it's uh, looked over and it's available, you're going to get questions about it. And that'll come up, you know, about readmes and documentation and whatnot. Are you willing to fix the issues that come up? You're not only affecting your site or sites, but you're affecting other people. Um, I can tell you that I... I have white screened a Doom like 10,000 sites, you know, by actually um, using uh, PHP Storm. If you guys are familiar with PHP Storm, I love that environment. Uh, but they actually, by default, uh, converted arrays to just the brackets, and that's no go if you have PHP 5.3. And I released it. Like, just, oh, no big deal. I went through tests, no big deal, cool. And then all of a sudden, in the .org forums, we were like, hey, I can't even get to the admin now. And I'm like, womp, womp, my bad. But think about this if you had, like, Jetpack, or you had, you know, WordPress SEO by Yoast. Could you imagine just, like, creating, like, a white screen of Doom? We had one plugin that had 10,000 active installs. I couldn't even imagine having millions. It would completely stress me out. Um, other things to think about, are you open to feature requests and, um, are you willing to actually open source your plugin because it's kind of required once you actually put it onto .org and are you open to haters hating, uh, because they're gonna, like, it doesn't matter how awesome your plugin is, uh, you're, you're going to get a lot of constructive feedback, but there's always, there's always one in the crowd that's going to do something that's not so nice. So you have to be able to tolerate that and figure it out. I think the larger the organization, the more they have to go through that. Uh, just check out anything that automatic releases and you know, people automatically think it's, something's going on with it. So more stuff. Um, there are some rules about releasing uh, your plugin. Uh, it can't be anything illegal. <laughs> uh, I, don't, I, I don't know. I've never come across anyone, so I don't, I don't know what an even example would be. Uh, maybe illicit drug trade or something. Um, you're not supposed to embed any links uh, at the in the front end of a site, so powered by whatever without looking for permission. Um, there's a huge list of guidelines, but basically just try not to spam people is the overarching uh, you know breakdown. And this is actually on the .org uh, site. So if you're cool with all this, you know, and you're pumped like this dude, check this out. Is he wearing pants? It's weird. I don't know if he is. And check out this kid with the cowboy hat. He's like my hero. I saw this today. I had to use it. So let's get to work. Uh, how many of you know what GPL is and what that license means? We got one, we got two, we got three. Oh, we got a few more. Cool. So what is GPL and why is it required and what does it have to do with my plugin? Bruce Willis by Aaron Ware. So GPL is a copy left. Uh, license, which basically means uh, if if I create something and, it, and all of the derived work of of that project has to adhere to that same license, and what that really means, there are similar ones like MIT is listed here, BSD licenses, 
Uh, what that really means is in, in order to be a permissive free license um, and, and it's copyleft, it means that WordPress Foundation considers anything that's a theme or a plugin to be derivative work of WordPress. So ultimately, that means if you want to have something on .org, it means that you're going to, uh, if you don't say explicitly it's GPL v2 or later, which is the default, um, WordPress.org, once you upload it, will assume that it is. And that's explicitly a rule. So um, while there are other, uh, you know, whether you're using like Envato and, you know, there's a, there's, there's a huge amount of articles about GPL versus non-GPL and all that stuff. I don't go into that, but just for the sake of WordPress.org, uh, you have to adhere to that license. Um, so once you say like, okay, I'm in... I, I, I'm totally cool with GPL. I'm, I'm going to release my plugin. I'm going to open source it. You already have the plugin itself, so that means you have your plugin file. Let's just say it's a simple Hello Dolly. The next thing you have to really think about, and I truly think this is the most important file, is a readme.txt file. And this readme.txt file really breaks down everything that someone needs when they're actually like listing your plugin. So like .org is going to list it and everything that a user needs to know about your given plugin. In this example, this is taken right from the, the default file structure. Uh, here, uh, we need to know who the contributors are, uh, which is within their WordPress uh, user ID. So like mine, for example, would be aware. Um, if you are looking for donations, you can share the link there. It'll add a button to your site. Um, tags that are going to be associated with it, which I'll cover in a moment. Um, what, what version of WordPress is required for your plugin, which is pretty important, um, you know, especially as uh, you, you'll see it with popular plugins. You'll see when they deprecate, you know, plugins that are supported. You can see it in Jetpack and Akismet. You can see it in um, many of the popular plugins, what version uh, it requires at least. Uh, the other thing that's really important is uh, what you tested it up to. This gives people an idea of if, you know, 4.6, which is coming out soon, uh, you know, it gives a, a sense of has this plugin actually been tested with that, maybe in one of the nightly releases or whatnot. Um, it, it gives a good, a good indicator of how well it's working. Uh, stable tags, we'll get into in a little bit. And then you'll see uh, right there, uh, the next line is our license, which is GPL uh, v2 or later. Uh, you can actually also give a link to whatever license. And this can be, uh, I've seen GPL v2 or later. I've also seen like MIT here as well. So it'll show like a dual license. Uh, I don't know if that's actually a rule that you can't have both, but I, I have seen it. Uh, from there, actually we give uh, descriptions, installation. There's a lot more information that you can actually share below here. You can also uh, give descriptions to screenshots, uh, which I'll go into in a little bit. Um, but you can also get into change logs and get very descriptive uh, about your plugin here. And that's what makes this portion of any plugin really important because it's giving a lot of detail. You can actually get into markdown and whatnot. I'll go into that a little bit. Um, I will say something. When you start writing uh, your readme.txt, do not use the tag plugin uh, in your plugin because what happens and Wayne Gretzky taught me this is that everybody uses a, well not everybody but a lot of people actually use plugin so this is actually on wordpress.org and you can search by tags and you can see some great ones Facebook it's like awesome comments that's great widget widget is really really popular but for some reason a lot of people and I don't know why but a lot of people put plugin as a tag for their plugin when they're organizing by plugin tags. I don't, I, don't, I don't get it, but don't do that. Or if you know a really reason why you can sell me on it, please sell me on it. So to, to make the readme.txt file, you, you have a few ways to go about it. You can just start from scratch using the standards, the, the one that I shared. WordPress.org has that same file just available. If you actually get into uh, plugin development, uh, if you just search for plugin development on WordPress.org, you'll see that file. Uh, but one thing that really helps is actually looking at other sites, or not looking at other sites, looking at other plugins uh, that do it well. If I, there's a plugin that I love called Stream, and their documentation within their README file is awesome. 
gives a breakdown of their change logs, screenshots, all that good stuff. And it, it helped give some guidance uh, when we were creating our README for Mesh. It's, the Mesh README is probably the most in-depth one we have at Lynchpin. Um, and the last one is using a tool, like uh, use uh, the generate WP uh, plugin readme file. You can actually put in some details about it and it'll spit out a formatted file for you, which it's great to have those tools. I'll talk about some other uh, uh, tools that are out there if you are starting from scratch. Again, I'm thinking about this from the sense of you already had a plugin and now you're trying to retrofit some of this stuff. Another good aspect of tools that are available to you is once you have um, a README file created, it has all the wonderful stuff about your plugin that you need, it doesn't have a plugin tag, uh, the next thing you can do is um, actually validate it. And th this really helps from, uh, I, I think the best uh, usage of this is making sure your markdown is uh, formatted properly uh, and, and making sure that you have all the sections that WordPress.org really wants. This is actually uh, the validator is completely available. The only thing is you're not uploading a file, you're just linking to it. Uh, so you just have to have it somewhere that's accessible. Um, and uh, if, if you're familiar with uh, WordPress.org a little bit, it supports Markdown, uh, but it's kind of quasi-Markdown. You have to kind of use their formatting. That's the only one strange part. So if you're a fan of Markdown, uh, you have to do it a little bit differently. And uh, forgive me if I'm going kind of fast and trying to blaze through and uh, cut down on time. Uh, so now at this point, uh, we've we've thought about security a little bit. At least we've you know we've tr we've thought about the coding stands a little bit. We have our plugin. It's it's a very simple plugin, and we've created our README file. But one aspect we we need to also consider is within our plugin if we're going to actually support. Uh, localization, internationalization, and being able to translate our plugin. This is actually, it was kind of an afterthought. When we released Mesh, um, our team, you know, we uploaded the plugin, and then we realized that while we had, um, we were actually using uh, the WordPress get text methods uh, for our plugin, meaning that we weren't hard coding strings in our plugin. The one thing we didn't really do is actually define um, our text domain, uh, which you can see here in the, the, the code block, or the languages uh, directory where we're going to store uh, our translations. And this was something that uh, our plugin's really small, but if we had a lot of strings that were involved in our plugin, to go back later on and have to retrofit and change all this stuff uh, would have been quite the endeavor. Uh, but I, I think that it's really important to think about. Uh, especially starting from scratch, but even retrofitting a plugin, making sure that uh, it has the ability to be translated in this day and age is really, really important. Um, and it, it can make it so, I, I've seen theme developers that you know, have really small themes that you know, people use and, and it gives, a, as long as we set up our plugins and our themes properly, uh, setting our text domains and utilizing uh, the get text methods that are available to us within WordPress, it actually allows people to utilize GlotPress uh, within WordPress.org and actually do translation. So they don't actually have to, a user can actually go into GlotPress, look at Mesh or another plugin and actually submit translations without actually having to write a line of code. They can actually just go in there, type in, if you said like, you know, click here now, they could change it to Aga, Aga Click a Key and then be on their way. And that's something that we've already seen in Mesh. We've seen a few people actually go in and actually make some slight modifications for other languages. Um, I actually, uh, I went in there just to kind of see and test and I realized that uh, I got a translation uh, like a little badge because I went in there and I actually was like in, you know, British UK. I was like, oh, color with a U, cool. And all of a sudden I got a translation badge and I was like, oh, that's actually kind of cool. I just went in there and I made a change. I didn't have to touch any code. The plugin was set up properly. Um, and it's a way, you know, where um, something that I'm very passionate about is, uh, the WordPress community, of course, I mentioned a bunch of things at the beginning, but 
you know, you don't always have to be a developer. You don't always have to be an organizer or a speaker. There are some people that just do translation. There are some people that just do documentation. And this is kind of a key area to, to allow other people to help in a different way. And you can see more uh, at the bottom. I have a bunch of resources. So um, there's a bunch of tools I, I, I mentioned, uh, you know, about like using get text and being able to set up our plugin. Ultimately, really what it does is it generates this POT file, which you can see a bunch of our uh, English uh, source text. Um, and then those, that, that source text and this uh, POT file are used to actually generate I believe it's the PO file or the MO file. Does anybody know? Anybody who's released the plugin? A PO, it is PO. Okay, cool. So it'll generate a PO, which then can be used to actually do the real translation. So I'm showing, um, and actually I'm showing uh, a, a tool called Poedit, uh, but um, you can actually do this on Glot Press. You don't actually don't need this at all. So now we've, we've thought about, again, we've thought about security a little bit. We've thought about our readme.txt file, which is really important. Um, so we thought about translation now. Uh, now it's on to the visuals. We actually want to sell people on our, our plugin on, on, the, on the repo. And the way that we do that is within our plugin, we also have uh, an assets directory. So that SS directory holds a few things in here. You can see uh, various banner sizes, plugin icons, <coughs> logos, and a few screenshots. All of these resources are used either through uh, the .org repo or they're actually used within the actual plugin directory. So these visuals that you see here, uh, there actually are a couple of sizes, so you can actually support uh, high pixel density retina displays with your imagery as well. Um, actually, I don't know if it supports the SVG. That might just be in ours, um, but someone can I can confirm that later. But we want to make sure that we're, you know, it, it's our plug and we're passionate about it. We want to market it. So we want to make sure that we provide all of these assets. They're not a requirement. You don't actually have to have any of them. Uh, you can see there's a number of plugins that are really popular that just have, like, the, the generated, like, imagery that's associated with... Uh, you know, any plugin that's uploaded. Um, I mentioned some of the, uh, the actual uh, sizes. Um, you'll, you know, again, it's, it, there's, they're pretty rigid. They want exactly specific things because the WordPress.org repo is, you know, a standardized place. Uh, so if you check out um, the actual documentation for WordPress.org, this is pretty much verbatim uh, right from .org. I'm actually surprised I don't have the link at the bottom. So now, we're ready. We've done our readme text file. Again, we thought about security. I like to always say that. Um, and we've thought about translation a bit. We have actually, maybe we've even made our POT file. Our first time that we actually are gonna, you know, submit our plugin, we don't actually use any, like, tools. We don't use SVN, we don't use Git. It's actually just this form. You actually, uh, Give it a name, you give it a description, typically the description that's in the, uh, the actual readme, that's what I've always done. Um, and then you actually uh, provide a link to the zip, so you just zip up everything. At this point, when you actually submit it, you know, you put in all these things, oh, eh. this is the most important part. An actual volunteer will do the initial review. So actually, a person will go in and actually look through it. So I'm sure there's some initial like scanning that happens just to make sure there's nothing really malicious that can get automatically caught. Uh, but someone is actually looking through uh, the plugin. I remember uh, the very first plugin I submitted, uh, it was uh, reviewed by uh, John James Jacoby, JTrips. He actually was the very first person I looked at a plugin of mine. And uh, I was like, oh. I just happened, like, I met him at a meetup. I was like, I have a plugin. I want to release it. This was, like, three years ago, maybe four years ago. And I was like, what do, what do I do? He's like, oh, yeah, upload the form. Uh, upload to this form. It's, it's, it's fine. So I'm going to look at it. And uh, 
he actually reviewed it too, so I didn't realize that because he, he just made it seem like, oh, you go to this form, you, you know, fill out the stuff, hit submit. And then I was like, well, what happens? He's like, oh, I'm going to look at it. And I was like, what do you mean? And he's like, yeah, everybody, there's volunteers. You'll see, like, Otto, like, I'm, I'm sure, like, there's, you, you've seen him in there. But there's a ton of people that actually, sim- like, take the time and actually review stuff. And I think that's, that's pretty powerful that, you know, there are actually people looking at it. And you can actually see the queue at the top. So in this sense, they were, like, this is from today. There were 131 plugins that were in the queue, and 102 were awaiting their first review. That means they had never actually, the, those people, like 102 of them right at that moment, had never been reviewed before. They were actually getting their first review, which I think is pretty awesome. That, that just goes to show how many plugins are actually are and how active the plugin community is. So after your plugin is approved, uh, you get a new repo. You actually get um, a, an SVN repo. How many of you are familiar with SVN versus Git? Cool, a few of you. All right, so SVN's been around a while, and because it's been around so long, it's really embedded into how WordPress works behind the scenes. So with that, every, um, every uh, plugin that's released on WordPress.org actually has its own repo, and that's how uh, revisions and updates are applied to everybody. Everybody commits to this plugin repo. Um, if you are familiar with Git, how many of you are familiar with Git? Cool, a little bit more than SVN. For all intents and purposes, while they are different, inherently there, there are differences between Git and SVN, They ultimately are just ways to version your software. Uh, So, uh, let's see here, what didn't I... uh, I'm not going to get into like mirroring. If you add like uh, GitHub or GitLab or Bitbucket or your your own hosted uh, Git, I'm not going to get into uh, mirroring. Um, There's a lot of tools out there that will do that. Um, I actually wrote a a grunt uh, script that doesn't mirror to .org, but it will kind of spit out files that I need just for .org, which I can share with you. So when when you first... Uh, I'm missing a slide. So when you first actually get your repo, you're going to get email that you, you know your plugin has been updated. And what you're going to do is you're actually going to log in... Uh, you're going to have to utilize a tool for subversion, whether uh, I'm a Mac user, so Cornerstone or versions. Uh, if you are a PC user, I'm not sure if Tortoise SVN is still around, but I know that that was popular a few years back when I was using a PC. But you're, you're going to need to util- or command line if you are you know, totally awesome. You can totally do that. Uh, but what happens is you're going to get a repo that you're going to have to do your initial checkout. When you are provided your repo, again, you'll use your WordPress.org uh, username and password. It's the same thing. And when you check it out, you're going to get something similar to this. It's going to have um, our assets that we need. It's going to have branches, which I'll get into momentarily. It's going to have tags, and it's going to have our trunk. So, if you're again, if you're familiar with Git, trunk is just like master. It's basically the production files that are going to be, uh, by default, given to a user when they actually download your plugin. We can uh, expand upon that a little bit, and if we have stable releases, something that I mentioned a little earlier in uh, the readme.txt file, you can actually tag various releases with different versions. So you can actually see this is um, some of our tags, our stable tags from Mesh. Um, is you're supposed to kind of follow some sort of standard. We do the 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 actual just like PHP versioning standard, but you'll notice here uh, there's no 1.0.2. Uh, there, we just skip a number here. Uh, that's my bad actually because I committed it that way. So now it's tagged as that. Um, but there's no, I, I've seen all different like tag and versioning numbers. Some people are doing like commit messages, but it's good to have uh, a stable release version that kind of follows the, the standard shown here. Um, you can use branches. So branches within subversion are very similar, again, to, to Git. 
And it's good practice if you're doing major code changes uh, to not be submitting them you know, back to trunk because if you're trying to do something new and it might affect your, your user base, it's good to kind of break it out into um, you know, maybe beta release branches. Um, I, for one, I don't do a lot of active development um, and commits back to WordPress.org. Um, if you remember when I white screened a Doom earlier, uh, it's something I try and do. Um, most of our commits are done through um, you know, a mirror that's on uh, GitHub. Um, and then once we have actually a stable release, we've done a bit more testing. Typically we have one person that's in charge of that release and that release uh, manager will actually push it out to WordPress.org and that seems to work a little bit uh, better for us just to have one person that's in charge of that at a given time versus the Wild West where people are just committing back. Um, and it, if you want to get some real insight into um, you know, the different processes that people have, take a look at like Jetpack, for example, you'll see that they'll have one person that's committing the entire project. The rest is done through uh, like GitHub or another avenue. So after you had your plugin uh, submitted to the repo and you maybe you've done a, a commit or two after that, you know, it's about uh, promoting your plugin, which I always think meetups are a great way to do that. Like I mentioned mesh here. Um, but uh, take a look at the WordPress Advanced User Group. That's usually a great avenue to get um, more eyes on a uh, on your plugin and get a little bit more uh, testing. Uh, it's something that we did with Mesh. We we shared it with our local meetups first before we actually released it. We got some great feedback um, that you know we took to heart, and we've actually been making changes on. Uh, other things are like obviously like WP Tavern and other online publications. Um, and then one last one is a site. Um, it's not so much about promoting your plugin per se, but it's more about promoting you. So if you are someone that actually uh, has released a theme or a plugin uh, on WordPress.org, uh, there is uh, a site out there called Jetpack.pro. And what it will do is it'll actually aggregate um, if you have uh, released a plugin on WordPress.org, if you have been a speaker at a WordCamp or a meetup, uh, if you are an organizer, if you have translated something, or if you are just involved in the community. Um, this is actually a project by Automatic uh, that I know a bit about. Um, and what it will do is it'll actually aggregate all that information from WordPress TV and WordPress.org, um, and even the, uh, the plugin commit logs, it'll put it all together and give you actually a, a nice looking profile so you can get a sense of uh, how active you are in the community. It'll also uh, allow you to share that, much like you could share um, a LinkedIn profile. Um, and it's something that um, you can actually find me and a bunch of Lynchpin team are on it. Um, and it's something if you want to get a good sense of uh, where you are kind of in the WordPress community, not in a a score better than this or that, just what professionals are out there, um, I encourage you to uh, sign up. Uh, I know that uh, they've been getting a ton of, uh, ton of positive response and a ton of features about what they, you know, what the community wants. Like for me, it's um, making sure that theme developers and theme designers uh, get a little bit more notoriety. A lot of times, if you look on WordPress.org, um, the process is a little bit different, and that's something that I'm, I'm pretty passionate about. So check that out. Um, if you're starting from scratch, um, there's actually a few uh, great little tools out there. Otto, which I mentioned, he actually has a plugin called Pluginception. Uh, it gives you a great base to actually start your plugin with a great README um, and a great like starter uh, plugin file, uh, generator WP make, uh, by 10 up those cats have a great plugin, uh, not plugin, a great set of yo man tools that'll actually help you generate plugins and themes and all that stuff. Um, I mentioned Poedit for actually editing, uh, translation files. Um, if you haven't checked out the WordPress coding standards and you are a passionate developer in WordPress, um, I encourage you to go there. I learned so much from that. Um, 
And with that, are, are there any tools that uh, you guys use if you have released? It's Morgan, right? Yes. Yeah, Morgan, what do you use that I didn't mention? Well, <clears throat> for my SVN client, I run Ubuntu Linux and I use the, the command line on Ubuntu Linux to push to SVN. And there's, there is a, on WordPress.org, there's instructions how, which commands to run from the command line to do that. Cool. That's what I use. I love it. And then for my text, for my um, IDE, my text editor, I use um, Kate editor uh, on Ubuntu. It's just, it's an advanced text editor. Right on. So is it Kedit? Uh, it's same, pretty much it's similar. They have the same okay. code base, I think. Kedit. Okay. Kate. Right on. So with that. Thanks for having me. Uh, I know I went through a ton really fast. Uh, so if anybody has any questions, you know, you can always find me with all this great info. Uh, but if you have any questions or comments, let's do it. What do you got? John. What's your experience been with dealing with the support inquiries that we pressed on our forms? So, you know, honestly, I, I got to tell you, our... We don't have nearly as many plugins as Automatic, and our user base is pretty small. Our most active plugin has just a hair over 10,000 active users. Um, and we have always, until we released Mesh, we didn't have really complex plugins. They were very simple. Like, I can tell you, our most popular plugin is the one that disables WP Auto P. <laughs> like, literally, that, that is our most popular plugin. Um, there's not a lot of questions associated with that. So um, I found that it wasn't so much the influx on WordPress.org because we had great uh, feedback there. It was when we were actually on GitHub that we actually got more feedback. And I just think that people stumbled across it more. I'm, I'm not sure if it was by us sharing at meetups, uh, but that's where we got a, a lot more feedback. I feel like the, the forums on WordPress.org are a little bit cumbersome, and I know that there's a lot of talk about revamping that experience. Um, but it's been we, we've had pretty positive feedback overall. And I, I know there are others that have had really good feedback and then not so good. Anybody else have questions? In the back. You asked about what, what we're doing that wasn't, that wasn't in the slides. Yep. Um, one thing that had just happened that affected the workflow that we have that I was super excited about. Code Climate now enables uh, WordPress code extenders with two lines of YAML, YAML configuration, which is really nice because they're reporting, when you're dealing with, a, with converting a legacy code base that may have lots of violations of, of a coding standard, Code Climate's reporting tells you on, a, on each diff in, Git, in GitHub, this, this change fixed these problems, introduced these new problems. That's awesome. Cool, that's awesome. Yeah, I use, uh, it's pretty popular in our office, we use PHP Storm, and they have great integrations. It's like right out of the box. You can just, it'll, it'll implement the coding standards. And again, I, I cannot encourage you enough. Go and uh, read through the standards because it's as simple as, you know, formatting, but then there's also um, just ideas uh, uh, around uh, security are in there, ideas around translation are in there, and uh, it, it's, it's one of those things that's been paramount over the, really over this last year for me. Anybody else? Questions? Cool. Well, thanks again. I really appreciate it. And, uh, you know, come talk to me if, if you have any questions. Thanks.